What up and welcome back to another Malazan Book of the Fallen video. This time we're doing something different. I wanted to talk about one of what I think is the best aspects of the book. I debated on whether to make this video or not. If you go watch the uh, the Counselor of Moonspawns video, I think you can I can link to it up there. She has a video about women in Malazan and Erickson commented saying that he didn't really think it was appropriate for him to weigh in on on the topic and I kind of uh, wondered if if maybe it isn't appropriate for guys to weigh in but what I decided to do was to make a video about uh, women in Malaza not as an expert on the subject but just to tell you as a kind of layman uh, what what my perspective is and what I appreciated about the women in Malaza that I think makes it uh, one of the most interesting ways that uh, that we see this tackled in modern fantasy again from like a non-literary background so uh, hopefully this gets a conversation rolling. I'm going to issue a challenge at the end for more uh, Malazan women videos from other booktubers, but uh, this one will be my entry. Let's get into it. couple of ground rules that I want to start off with up front. Well, A, this might have some spoilers, but not really until the end. So I'll let you know when I get to my very last example when to jump out, but shouldn't be too bad other than just kind of general happenings. I'm not going to ruin major plot points or anything like that. Second order of business, though, is that I want to talk a little bit about what this video uh, isn't. I think if you go watch just my 10 favorite characters video in general from Malazan, you'll get the idea that it isn't just a list of the badass characters. Malazan has many badass characters, and it's one of the things that makes the series really fun, but it's not the part of the series that I gravitate towards. You'll notice I had just like a lot of uh, the gooey, uh, soft caramel center characters in there because I'm in it for the kind of emotional side of things. And so this isn't just a list of all the badass uh, female characters, although there's there's a bunch, right? And that's really fun to think about. It's not a it's not a Masan Galani or a Corlat or a Sin or a Precious Thimble or something like that kind of a video, a Triss or a really gnarly uh, female badass warrior video. This is uh, which kind of brings me to my second point, right? Like what does it mean to be a strong woman and I think that that is an interesting idea that gets explored throughout these these books if you go back and look at like the fantasy and again I'm not a well-read uh, literary fantasy person or anything like that but I've read um, you know a bunch of books like Wizard of Earthsea and uh, Wild Cards and I did my whole um, Kindle and and bookshelf tour so you can see all the stuff that I've read but you know if if you think about going back there's like a lot of uh, barbarian tropes I think there's a lot of memes out in the Facebook groups right about like women's armor and things like that where it's basically like not uh, functional you, you know there's no utilitarian aspect to the armor it's like a, a metal bra with the whole rest of like your internal organs like exposed and stuff like that so it's totally like um, male sexual fantasy stuff not like actual fantasy literature stuff um you know and and kind of that is is the stereotypical uh you know strong female character is to basically be strong like in a masculine way if that makes any sense you know or you get the kind of uh, f uh fantasy like damsel in distress like in uh you know, Guinevere and stuff like that. And Lancelot's got to come save her, King Arthur and and that kind of stuff too. So there, you know, the but if you think about the ones who are considered really strong, they tend to be like these warrior types, like the the Conan, the barbarian, like partner going with a great warrior. And a great woman. And I think the high fist is the one who said something like you just make a super badass male character and then you put boobs on it. And and that's pretty much been the tail of the tape for for most fantasy series. And even in like modern fantasy, I think where they were trying to um, correct for this or or to do better <laughs> female characters. I, you know, I still think that they, in some ways, made them um, powerful still in like a masculine sense. So, like, I read Wheel of Time, and there's like a lot of really badass. 
uh, female characters in there, right? Like Avienda is like a total badass warrior. She's a badass uh, at channeling. Two, you have uh, Gwen and Nynaeve. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of really the Forsaken, right? Super um, badass, but they're really badass at, at killing and battle, um, at being warriors, right? At channeling and being able to uh, be efficacious in combat, essentially. And so even though they're painted as like really strong characters and they are uh, women, they're still really powerful in in what I would call that traditional sense where it's like they might as well just have been dudes. In fact, you know, one of the things that bugs me about Wheel of Time that I'm hoping they improve on in in the show is that they might um, do a little more realistic portrayal of the kind of non um, combat aspects of the female characters, and we get like less uh, braid tugging and hand wringing or like heart palpitations with um, you know the Gwen uh, relationship that she has with uh, with Elaine's brother. I don't know why I'm spacing on his name right now, Gawain. Um, you know, and and or like Mooney uh, girls. I just feel like the relationship aspects were very not realistic and didn't explore those uh, in a way that that I felt like was true to um, maybe for me as a male to be able to read those and figure out like put yourself in in those kind of shoes. I don't believe you. And there's also just like a lot of terrible communication. And maybe this is like a coming of age aspect of the story because they're all like late teenagers, basically, and um, struggling with you know, purity and sexuality and all of that stuff. But, you know, it seems kind of uh, contrived. You have a lot of like the the kind of stereotypical views of the the women like condescending to the men, right? Like the men are all these like bumbling idiots and the women circles, the one that's really running the show, even though the man, you know, the men have this uh, ruling council or whatever, but they're really the, the power and they let them think they're in charge. But again, just kind of this, you know, not a grown up relationship where we communicate and, you know, hold each other to account and uh, are honest with one another, which I think is like, um, you know, the, the crux of like real successful relationships with longevity and stuff like that. You don't get the, there by condescending to the other person for 50 years. And I think that's kind of like an old school, uh, like 1950s projection onto some of the female characters in, in Wheel of Time. And so, again, I think that uh, there's a lot of strong characters, but they're still strong in the sense that uh, like a white male 1950s like baby boomer type uh, would have tried to do and I love Wheel of Time I got the hardbacks there um, and and this isn't a knock but I just think that that is what I love about uh, Malazan if you go to something like a Mistborn even there you see uh, again that kind of same masculine type of strength right Vin is is a dope character and I like Mistborn I know a lot of people don't but uh She's a badass, right? And she's a badass at fighting. She's a badass at burning metals, right? And she can burn the most metals, burn them the strongest and beat people's ass. Um, and and she does have, like, I think a little bit more exploration of her um, relationship with uh, Elend during those books. And, and you can kind of get a sense of strength in their relationship that they truly respect one another. And that was um, really, really cool to see. But for the most part, Vin's strength stems from her actual like uh, physical strength or um, magical strength where she can beat anybody's ass basically and win wars uh, and take down the final empire and that's the the end game for her and that's what makes her such a badass right that's where her strength is is ultimately perceived to be I will f you up we could talk name of the wind and stuff, but I think don't even get me started on that one. But, you know, it's like, uh, we get it, dude. You were tormented in high school and you're showing all your tormentors and bullies that uh, who the real top dog is now. All the chicks want you. I mean, all the chicks want Quoth, right? Uh, we get it. That's right, I said it. If you think about something like an ice and fire, right, like a song of ice and fire there, I think we're starting to get somewhere, right? Because we have uh, strong characters like Catelyn Stark, like Arya Stark, who, again, is um, powerful in a masculine way. But we have like the Cersei Lannisters. We have the Melisandres, right, who are um, 
powerful for their their brains, for their trickery, their you know um, strategic thinking. Their that, but they and they start to use their their kind of female uh, persuasion as a tool, right, to to uh, win in in either you know politically or in combat or what have you, and and that is starting to get a lot more interesting. They're a lot more morally gray, right? I guess they you know they just have a lot more influence through their their actions and behaviors and and things on the on the world their relationships their impacts on other characters and and that happens you know although we do see some stabbing out right from Arya and things like that or Daenerys uh you know drops firebombs on on some of her her opponents there's also like a much more uh cunning aspect to to what Sansa's doing in the later books right when she's uh you know, parading around as Littlefinger's um, daughter, right? As Elaine or whatever her name is, and and so that is is starting to get more interesting. But the really badass ones is like when Daenerys jumps on that dragon and lays waste to everything, or when uh, when Arya catches up with uh, with Jano Slint. No, not Jano Slint, uh, Sir Merwin Trant, right, and stabs him up. Those are are still again. You're you're getting kind of that that kind of masculine strength still, but but we do get a lot more nuanced female characters uh, that are more realistic, frankly, to me as a reader in in Ice and Fire. So the progression is is starting to happen there. For me, I guess the the good thing is that I just you know you don't get that same kind of like patronizing, condescending treatment of of women as being immature or lacking that capacity for uh, you know real communication or honesty or whatever and and so that is refreshing. Even Cersei, right? Like she within the confines of the kind of patriarchal society that she lives in, she's able to uh, move and shake pretty strategically and and again use seduction as a weapon and and all of that stuff and so again uh, much more conniving but again still in a traditional kind of like grabbing for power kind of sense right and even all of those strong female women in ice and fire is baked into this patriarchal uh, power focused society like who's gonna be the one to sit on the the throne who's the one who's gonna get king's landing and that you know who's gonna control the house what have you it's still ultimately about achieving a kind of masculine vision of of power or strength and what is that if not like still basically being dudes and essentially resorting to uh like whipping out the tape measure mine are bigger than yours and that brings me to Malazan, right? Because for me, that's one of the best things about the books is the kind of realistic treatment of women. And I'm not here, again, with no literary background to tell anyone what's the correct way to portray women. But what I liked about it was that it was kind of uh, strength in in a kind of non-masculine way that was getting explored, right? And I think there's a lot of really strong women, which is why I look forward to all the videos and... Uh, I don't know what I'm pointing at, but I'm, I look forward to, to the videos that other people are going to make because there's so many amazing uh, women in this series who aren't just badass warriors. Yes, you have the Corlats and the Sins and the people who are just straight up epic at beating people's ass and destroying armies, but you also have uh, strong characters like the Maibi, right? Like I'm going through my Memories of Ice read through right now and talk about a strong character, right? She knows her kid's killing her. She still loves her kid and you can see her like grappling with that and still ultimately um, puts the kid first and does everything to protect the kid to, uh, you know, both physically and emotionally and to reassure the kid and to not be bitter and to fight her bitterness, uh, you know, even as she's literally being killed. I also love that storyline because I think it's a good uh, metaphor for motherhood. And I look, you know, at my wife with a whole new level of respect and actually uh, concern for just the you know, the sapping of the life force that it takes to do uh, children correctly. You know what I mean? But she is in there um, going toe to toe with 
you know, leaders of armies and rulers and things like that, and being the kind of Jiminy Cricket moral conscience of the 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 kind of campaign, if you will, and and just a really strong character who's able to um, suffer through so much and to remain positive and to keep perspective on on kind of the the greater good. I think the Maybe is an awesome example of a, a strong woman character who doesn't do anything with a sword or magic. She never kicks anybody his ass right but uh and actually i think she might be um a hated character or a one that people don't like to read like felicin it's she's not as as kind of um bitchy about it i think as her, of her plight she tries to take it with uh you know to grit her teeth and bear it basically whereas felicin takes more of a lash out approach i i think that's a good video in and of itself like why do we have more empathy and compassion for the maybe compared to felicin who both get basically a deal um but that's that's kind of a tangent but then you have characters like kalava who's also really strong she's strong in the kind of traditional badass sense right she turns into a panther and can straight beat your ass too but uh for me the the cool stuff that was getting explored early on you don't really find out kalava's whole backstory with own rack and all that till much later on but just uh you know the defying of her clan right the shunning of of war as pointless and stupid and refusing to to kind of get into that uh, whipping out the tape measure type of mentality, which has basically plagued the the Jagat and the and the Talon Imas this you know for for millennia that really has served no ultimate goal. She shows compassion to uh, the the kids in the prologue of Memories of Ice, right? And so it's about um, an inner strength. It's about uh, feelings, right? And and a and a kind of uh, a fortitude that's there. I also love that they're not perfect, right? Kalava is not a perfect person. You only have to, you know, look at her relationship with Onrak and how toxic that was. Um, her, her kind of, um, her compassion wasn't always well placed. I guess is what we can say in a fairly non-spoilery way. Just ask the Panny and Domin or the Panny and Seer, right? But uh, you know, strong, not just for kicking people's ass. But but also, you know, a much more morally uh, gray person as well. What about Lacine, right? Lacine is the classic person who I think we're supposed to read as like um, the the stereotypical like successful um, bitch, right? Like she is um, standoffish. She's cold. She's cranky. But even there, you find out that there's much more layers, right? In Return the Crimson Guard and even in Memories of Ice and uh, Dead House Gates even, you find out that there's uh, much more involved, that she isn't just this self-serving, power-grabbing person, right? And I made the whole argument, I think it's up there uh, in my in my Lacine video, where she's underrated, right? She wasn't just self-serving, otherwise she never would have done the, the kind of fake outlawry thing of of Dujak's host and all of that just to let him go fight this holy war that really didn't benefit the empire they didn't gain any territory and so that wasn't just purely self-serving she's out there fighting bare hands and feet in return of the crimson guard on behalf of the the empire and so there's a lot more uh compassion empathy there's a lot more caring there for her people and uh wanting to do right there's a lot more morality there than i think she gets credit for but she just doesn't do it in a way that that kind of seeks the the attention or seeks the love um which is is kind of the way i think that we're we're used to kind of forcing that box onto folks um is to either you know you know be the biggest badass and succeed in a in a kind of very masculine way which surly does but keeps totally under wraps we barely even know what a badass she actually is until we get you know a few books into the ice stuff damn girl you a badass there's a lot of other um just like mentally tough and strong and like kind of non-masculine strong badass women in the series like apt like janath um who you know does so much that i won't get into um like badell right there's it's like Sam R. Dev. There's a lot of great videos and there'll hopefully be even more on these amazing female characters, but I can't get into them all. So I just wanted to end with my, you know, favorite female character, which is like, to me, the, the kind of icon of um, a strong woman 
in a kind of new sense, in a non-masculine sense that we explore in Malazan, because she, again, is, is not strong when it comes to picking up a sword or accessing a warren to uh to do deal damage either in combat or in kind of like a one-on war uh one-on-one duel situation she's like the classic person that we would label like a bitch in our world right she's cold she's standoffish she plays it close to the vest she doesn't confide she doesn't go out and get drunk and have a bunch of buddies uh that they you know all cause trouble together her own people have a tough time warming up to her she's gay right and that totally plays into that narrative of her being like this kind of um you know tight ass that that you know isn't uh isn't popular right and that's the whole thing with the cold iron right she's not out there palling around and you know winning everybody over and giving everybody slaps on the back and down in the beer that's just not the kind of leader she is and the fact that she's gay like you know we just look at that as like oh this is just like the classic uh, you know yeah stone cold but by the end of the books, and if you haven't already left by now, um, you you probably should, even though I'm not going to do major plot point spoilers. But she's also like a hugely uh, empathetic person too, a caring person, right? Like self-sacrificing and putting, um, you know, a, a bigger cause above her herself. I forget who it was, but it, uh, in one of the books, it might have been during the Bone Hunters. They're like, yeah, but is Tavor going to like do what's good for herself or what's good for the army and her men and or her troops and uh, and. And they said something to the effect of, for her, it's it's kind of one and the same. They're they're synonymous. That she always does uh, what is right. Her strength also comes from the fact that she's just a straight up genius too, right? Like a tactical genius. But not only that, also at like kind of managing people. Look at the forging of the bone hunters, right? Look how she was able to kind of read those situations and and kind of ride that chaotic wave in such an efficacious manner. Those omens started happening and she knew exactly what to do uh, and to let that go on, right? And and I remember Fiddler being in awe of like, wow, she's she gets it, right? She understands people and motivations and incentives and and, and is playing like a much more crazy three-dimensional chess game. And that's where her strength uh, comes comes from. She let the gambling go on with the, with the scorpions and all that stuff, right? There was just all these little touches where she knew exactly the right amount of control to exert um, and, you know, the right amount of hard ass to be and the right amount of latitude kind of mixed in to really get these folks to, um, you know, to build up this reverence for herself, right? To endear folks to her, to, to create a sense of awe about her uh, preternatural like ability to uh, to to foresee events and to guide those events in a way that was going to be best for them, and to, to build up that trust that she um, was was you know worthy of of the the role that she was in. What a great boss you turned out to be. Best boss I ever had. But it's not just that she's like a smart, hard ass who does what it takes to to succeed while still being uh, empathetic. What I think is awesome is that she is like good at making really hard choices. She isn't just this like super nice, uh, empathetic and sympathetic uh, person, right? Who's going to come in and solve all your problems. No, she's like an ice cold uh, bitch, right? That's the whole cold iron thing. That's the the whole point of it is that she is standoffish, that she doesn't rush in and, and just feel bad for her troops and want to take away all their pain and suffering. She's uh, holding them to the highest standard. She doesn't go in and go, I feel so bad and want them to like her and relieve, you know, all their burdens and things like that. She's not just this motherly type who goes, oh, come here to, to Auntie Tavor and she'll make everything all better. She's like, no, get in those trenches. We're doing this. So although she's empathetic and compassionate and things like that, she's also uh, not afraid to lead. And, and that is strength, right? Like how do you... Um, make hard choices when you know it's going to hurt and piss off and probably kill a bunch of the people that you're responsible for and and balancing that against the the virtues of the cause and things like that and that's the real beauty of Tavor right is that and the strength for me is that she is 
uh, never asking anything of her troops, even though she's holding them to the the highest standard to basically go in and save the world, essentially, uh, which is like the five second synopsis of of Malazan, right? Or to heal the world, maybe is a, a better synopsis if we go with Cal's autoimmune analogy there. But uh, and arguably, if you look at what happened to her family, to her mother committing suicide. Uh, to Felicin, right, to her own heart when she um, can't recover. Felicin, she's making just as big, if not more, sacrifices. She's excommunicated from the Empire, and that's very much still an open question, I think, at the end of, of The Crippled God is what's going to happen with the host and with Tavor and Malik Rell and all of that stuff. Um, she, you know, that was career suicide, essentially. Um, and so, again, she is is putting herself on the line, and that is not an easy thing to do. That's real strength, right? It's one thing to lead from the rear and say, you know, go storm those trenches. I'll be sipping my cappuccino back in the command tent. Uh, and it's another thing to give just as much or more physically, emotionally, um, and, and to be that invested and to kind of honor that sacrifice that our people are making, right? It's easy to sit back and say, you guys go and then, oh, we'll just uh, requisition more troops from, from HQ and not really care, right? But to, uh, to, you know, not to be sympathetic, we're not going to save you from all these bad times or to, to say they're there and cry for you and all that stuff. But what we can do is make sure that the cause that you're fighting for is just um, that we honor the sacrifice and respect it. The one that that we're asking you to to make and uh, and and while we're still going to put you through the ringer. It's going to be for the greater good, and we're going to have our uh, strategic ducks in a row so that you're not uh, just dying for no reason because of stupid strategic blunders because somebody doesn't care or wasn't smart enough or what have you. And so I think that she um, just the strength of, of Tavor is that she really strikes that balance between uh, being a hard ass, being a leader, but being empathetic by, uh, you know, putting herself out there just as much or more, um, you know, that's that's true leadership to me and that's true strength, right? They always say that uh, what's the difference between um, or what's a, what's a leader with no followers? It's just somebody out taking a walk, right? And so um, leading by striking that balance between uh, whipping them into shape, giving them something to believe in, earning that respect, um, still being willing to put them through the ringer though, ultimately, but doing it for the, the right reasons. And for me, that's just the epitome of, of strength and very realistic. And it's not just that she whips out her sword and kicks everybody's ass uh, and is the best at shooting magical fireballs out and crashes the most. Uh, mountains down shooting biggest lasers and all of that stuff um, her strength comes from herself as as a person her kind of uh, inner grit stick to itness um, her smarts her vision her her emotional awareness um, and and all that stuff you know ultimately for her it's not about like whipping out the tape measures uh, and and that is none of the the motivation and it makes it very realistic to me it makes it very powerful because it's a new concept of of what it means to be strong right is not just to, to win and to be the ruler um, but to actually do right to do good um, to lead by example and all of that stuff. It's not about getting that crown um, or or getting the throne or being popular even or or even being witnessed. Right. It's it's about putting um, what's right and good ahead of of all else and what could possibly be stronger than that. Yeah. I'm going to challenge all of my Malaz tubers to get involved, to make at least one video uh, on Malazan or Malazan women, right? I want it to be at least 10 minutes long and to focus on one character only. You can make as many videos as you want, but I want to dig in for at least 10 minutes on one individual character. It doesn't have to be why they're, they're strong characters or um, strong female characters in fantasy or anything like that. But I want to I want to really shine a spotlight on all these amazing uh, Malazan women I'm not the the literary one, so I just wanted to start off the conversation so that the rest of Malaz Tube could jump in. Uh, and I thought this was kind of a fun way to do it because I think that uh, unlike what you know the the high fist said about other 
fantasy, right, is that we don't just see a bunch of strong male characters that we bolted boobs on uh, and put bikini armor on. These are our strong characters for a whole uh, other set of reasons. They're also just a lot more fun and diverse with the magic and backgrounds and all of that stuff. And so again, one 10 minute video uh, per character, and I want everybody to participate. So uh, I'll link a bunch of channels down in the description below, um, but watch everyone that, that you see and and uh, as a fan, I'm so excited to be able to watch him because, again, this is one of the aspects of Malazan that I think needs to be highlighted and celebrated. So make sure to subscribe to all of those videos uh, or all of those channels that I do link down below because, again, I know that there's going to be some really good Malazan or Malazan content coming down the pike very, very soon. If you want, you can like and subscribe to this channel as well, um, but we'll leave this one here and at least get the conversation hopefully rolling. Again, this isn't uh, a pronouncement about how women should be portrayed in fantasy. It's just what I liked about the, the women characters in Malazan that I thought was a little bit different than what I've seen in the past. So uh, yeah, we'll leave it there. Until next time. Happy reading.